Recently, I attended the annual conference for the Ecological Society of America in New Orleans. While I was there, I gave a talk about my research in restoration ecology, listened to other people give talks about their research, and saw posters about research. There was a lot of research, you guys. We're nerds. I brought my camera along to the conference, of course, and I made friends with a lot of other people who study ecology. Uh, my name is Alexandria Igwe. I go by Ali. Um, that's a more complicated question. I was originally from Stockton, moved to Houston, um, and now I'm at UC Davis for a PhD in microbiology. I'm David Inoue. I'm an emeritus faculty member at the University of Maryland and a researcher at the Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory out in Colorado. All right, my name is Ben Padilla. I'm a PhD student uh, at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, Massachusetts. Yeah, so I'm Phil Hahn. I'm an ecologist, a postdoc at the University of Montana. Mike Friedman. Uh, I teach at a undergraduate program for a medical that's part of a medical school in Antigua, in the West Indies. Uh, I'm Siddharth Ayngar. I'm a graduate PhD student at the University of Minnesota in St. Paul, originally from uh, India, southern India. But what is ecology? A textbook will tell you that ecology is the scientific study of interactions between organisms and their environment. But that's really dry. Ecology is fascinating. Why don't we ask some real live ecologists what ecology means to them? I think, well, ecology is all about interactions between a variety of organisms from the trees and plants um, to the soil chemistry that impacts the microbes that then feed back to then again affect the plants and the trees. So it's just interactions. Uh, I guess my perspective on ecology is that it, uh, it's a long-term science. So I, I have the, uh, the benefit of having 45-year-old data sets that, that I'm continuing. And so it gives me perspectives on how, how the natural world is changing. And so I think that's what ecology means to me, learning about the natural world and how it's responding to the changing climate. I would say that ecology to me means uh, the way that uh, all the different components of what we think of when we think of nature, all the different components of nature, so the plants, the animals, the rocks, the trees, uh, the sun, the water, all that, the way everything is interacting with each other and the way that we are interacting with all of those things. That uh, for me, it's really important to think about the fact that humans are part of ecology. And the way that we, uh, that we interact with all those components and the way that we change all those components and the way all those components change us is really important. Um, and so for me, ecology is just the, the integration and the synthesis of all the things we think of that are natural and unnatural that are going on in the world around us. So ecology is just the study of the natural world. So studying how, uh, in particular, I study how plants and insects interact with each other. Um, but this could be any interaction that we see in nature, how plants, you know, gather resources from the sun and water and grow and, and how they feed insects. And uh, yeah, just the interactions that, that happen in nature. Um, I guess e ecology for me has always been about like trying to see the big picture and trying to see everything interacting and very importantly seeing ourselves as part of that picture and interacting and not only keeping it like out there in the national, in the American system of national parks, which is very particular. Yeah, I mean, for me, it would be roughly the same thing. We're looking at, um, at a systematic approach to interactions between, quote, living and, quote, non-living worlds. But this also incorporates us as humans, as social beings. Um, and I think the, the metaphor of, of metabolism is useful here because metabolism in the broad sense is exchange of, of materials and energy. And I think that particular, those interactions in the best sense are constantly ongoing between humans in our social environment and um, the natural environment. 
which are not really separate. And and I think that's that's the other thing that's been really useful is flow. Like so many um, indigenous cultures and uh, so many bases of society, so ways of viewing society exist in terms of viewing us as flows and viewing the world as flows, which and I kind of like the dominant Western scientific view just doesn't have flows going in it. Yeah, it's very static. Yeah, it's it's very static. It's it, it has flows, but not as cycles. That's the other side. Us. The kind of mechanistic flows, kind of reductionist views of yeah. what in what those f flows uh, incorporate. <clears throat> and so, coming from ecology and being very interested in in working with different ways of knowing to actually enable change in the world. It's actually pretty easy coming from ecology to, to buy into all like to work with those frameworks. You can tell all of these researchers are passionate about the study of ecology, and I'm so glad they told me their stories. I really appreciate how most of them expanded the traditional definition to emphasize that humans are also part of nature, and so can also be studied as part of ecology. Their personal definitions often also helped explain what motivated them to study this field. I also wanted to know how these scientists come up with research questions, or how they decide which branches of ecology to pursue, because there's a lot of questions to ask about the connections in our world. Like, we could literally never run out of research questions? Um, a little bit. So this is an interesting, when I was first deciding what to do with my PhD, I think it, for me it was um, which articles could I stand reading? Because you have to read a lot of journal articles to come up with questions because you have to know what has already been done and to try to get an idea of um, what to do next. And some journal articles I just could not get through. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, you know, it seems interesting, but you know, maybe I'm not too interested in it. So when there's like journal articles that I find like I can read like a good book, like, oh my gosh, this was so interesting. And kind of the question questions just start forming from there. So um, that's how I come up with research questions. When I see an article that's really fascinating, that just under a, a bunch of other questions just come from that, then I start exploring those questions. Yeah. Uh, I used to tell students that uh, when you're trying to find a research project, you, you could either focus on a particular group of organisms and, and say, well, what questions can I ask about those organisms? Or you could pick a question and say, well, what's the best system to answer that question? Or, or more what I've done is to find a site where I like to work and devote my scientific career to working there and then looking for interesting things to work on at that project at that site so I've worked on plants I've worked on animals I've worked on short-term projects long-term projects but all have the common element of being at this field site so that, that's the way I've gone about it oh yeah I love that so um, I come up with research questions really just by by wondering I like to tell people uh, kids and um, you know, maybe students, if I've had a couple chances to visit classrooms, to just go out out in the woods and, and ask yourself I wonder questions. And really the way that I, that I come up with research questions is uh, when I'm out hiking or running or uh, especially when I'm hiking, I'm just walking through the woods, I'm not listening to music, I'm not listening to podcasts, I'm just all day out in the woods looking around and thinking and like, why is this tree here and not there? Or, uh, um, and things like that. And the same thing happens as I'm walking around a city. As someone who does a lot of urban ecology, if I'm walking around a city or a city park, why, why, are, why are the people going there uh, and not to this other part of the park? Or why are the trees here and not there? And just wondering, asking myself, I wonder questions. It's two, two things I do usually, is just read other people's work. So read what has been done in the past and try and build off of that. Um, that kind of sets the foundation for you know what is currently known, what is the state of knowledge you know right now, and then probably more. Uh, the, the funner way to, to come up with questions is to just go out in the field and observe, you know, insects. I look at insects on plants, what they're eating, um, how the plant responds to that, um, how, uh, you know, how damaged plants are, things like that. So I think just those observations in the field um, is probably the, the, 
the more captivating way to to ask questions. You want to go first? You've done more research in your life. <laughs> Not really, but oh. okay. I started out as um, I was working in the fisheries ministry in Nicaragua. And uh, we introduced tilapia, the length and breadth of the country, without, uh, this was back in the 80s, without understanding the ecological implications of invasive species. And that was kind of a kickoff point for me, because when I started to do my thesis, it initially was ecology and looking at that impact. And then somehow I got tracked into looking at genetic diversity, and then the microbiome, and then incorporating my, my, um, social views or uh, social political views because after all we were doing the tilapia as a way of enhancing food sustainability. So when I got into the microbiome I began looking at social impacts on the microbiota which were having impacts on people's health. That was me. That was probably a very torturous route. Yeah, um, my my dissertation research uh, is examining the dual uh, the the dual effects of rainfall variation and uh, nutrient pollution in global grasslands, and I did not I didn't enter my PhD expecting to do this, but I entered my PhD wanting to work on. Um, uh, work in this network that my advisors run, which is a collaborative global grassland experiment. And I was excited by that model of collaboratively doing stuff with uh, relatively simple things that people can do all over. Whereas a lot of, there's a lot of research that's very expensive things that only happen in some places and therefore tend to overrepresent North America and Europe in our understanding of global ecology. Um, and uh, so that's that's what research is to me right now. Uh, but I'm actively interested in making it uh, something that's relevant for people. That final sentiment really speaks to me. I tend to focus on what we would call applied ecology in my research because I also want what I do to be directly useful to people. I want to make the world a better place through what I do. And what he said about collaborative projects is also really interesting and exciting. Cooperative projects between labs and researchers can tell us a lot about our world, but they can be costly in terms of time and resources. Some researchers have explored the idea of collecting larger data sets by collaborating with what we often call citizen scientists, or people who are science enthusiasts without having science-related careers. I would consider all of you to be citizen scientists in the making. So I want to try something a little crazy. I would like all of us to develop and conduct a simple experiment together to learn more about the process of ecology research. That's right, I'm doing audience engagement. Ideally, this will be something we can perform in our backyards or local parks using cheap household equipment. For example, my academic research uses plastic cups and paper plates. You can post your ideas for this collaborative group project in the comment section below or in the comment section on the blog post linked in the description or you can tweet your ideas at me. In a few weeks, I'll take my top four favorite suggestions and put them in a poll on Twitter so that we can vote on what we're going to work on together. Ecology is, at the heart of it, a about connections in our natural world. Hopefully this collaborative group project will foster more connections within the roving naturalist community. I can't wait to see the ideas you guys come up with. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support the roving naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.